Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spange. Welcome back to Reforged Eden. Welcome back to my modest hole in the ground. I've expanded it a little bit to create a 304, not quite full capacity, but close enough, I feel, uh, container. The extension's going around the wall there. I've also just thrown this together as well, a little, little uh, hover miner here to help me dig uh, out the base from under here. It's, it's four drills that are a hell of a lot quicker than the one handheld drill that I was using before, so this has really helped as well. Um, I'll just dismantle that once it's done. But uh, yeah, I might expand out that direction next to see if I can get some kind of um, garden. I was going to put garden here anyway. I think I feel like um, we could probably cram everything into this room now. But I'm probably going to want more than just... Uh, I'm definitely going to want an advanced constructor soon. I, I can upgrade this one, of course, uh, once I get those components. Not quite there yet, even if I, if I, if I connect to input. I'm missing the steel. <laughs> well, yeah, I could upgrade it right now if I had the steel plate. Of all things to be short on, I am uh, a bang out of iron at the moment. So um, copper's also looking pretty bloody ropey. Um, silicon. Basically, I'm running out of everything apart from stuff I don't need uh, at the moment, like cobalt, titanium, restroom, neodymium, and so on and so forth. So uh, what I'm going to do today is take our brand spanking new hover miner out. I actually have two now, the tunnel rat and uh, and this thing, the RF01 excavator. A rubbish name, but you know, it works. It, it does what it says on the tin. This is what I built during chilling and building uh, the other week. I think the stream is up on YouTube if you want to watch it back. It was a good stream, actually. We managed to start and finish this monster in one uh, one take, so that was quite good. But yeah, this uh, this is our hover miner, uh, built for Reforged. It is, as you would expect, really kind of uh, drill mode. So that deploys six drills. Uh, we've also got a bunch of turrets on the top as well. So between six drills and three Gatling turrets... Uh, there's a harvester module on here as well. I think this should be a nice little boat to go out in uh, to go and get ourselves some iron. We, of course, need to um, figure out where we're going. Um, we might be... Obviously, we're going to avoid north. Uh, we can head over here. There are iron deposits. There's three of them of the eight on this planet. Three of them are there. There's one down there as well. So I think we're going to head this direction. It is into the dark, obviously. You know, it wouldn't be one of my episodes if it wasn't. So, uh, I think I just need to make sure it's ready. I think it's it's definitely fueled up. Yeah. And the ammo has 2,300 rounds. I What takes what does 15 mil take to build? Does it require iron? I can't remember. I think I think it does. Yeah, steel plate, copper ingot, and it will bang out of everything. Okay, so let's just shut all this down then. There's nothing else it, it can do for us at the moment. Um, the other thing I'm sort of running quite low on, although I do still have some canned meat here, is food. And that's kind of why I was starting to think about making a, a garden. I mean, you know, we've got the spoiled food to make uh, stuff. So, and I've also built a little tunnel down here, a bit rough and ready. This comes out underneath the water. And because it's water is a layer, um, I can actually go... There you go, I'm underwater now, but... <laughs> I can actually access my water generators outside of the water. Uh, it, it's not from a, from a role playing point of view. It sucks because this tunnel should be flooded. But <laughs> from a convenience point of view and the way the game works, whatever, whatever. I'm gonna put a door on here as well, so this is kind of like separate little hole away from uh, away from the rest of the base. Um, let's get you working on a bit more biofuel. Fuel should be fine. I, I obviously got a fair amount of fusion cells from the uh, abandoned factory last time. Uh, still waiting for that sort of thing to regenerate so that we can go and do it again. I think that'll probably be my limit, though. I'll probably just say, right, okay, well, if I do it, if I do it a third time, it's probably cheesing it a bit too much. Uh, so yeah, I might leave it there. But anyway, we are, we are. Look at this. We've actually got a proper, a proper vehicle today. We're going to go out and use it. I'm, I'm started building the bridge over over to this sort of bit of land which will make exiting and entering the hangar a lot easier when it's done but as you can see I kind of I kind of run out of uh, concrete in that job so yeah 
We'll leave that for now. Right, let me turn off drill mode a second. We are definitely just in the mode for cruising along for now. We are still... Uh, no, I am friendly with Polaris. Well, hell yeah, I didn't realize I was, but obviously killing all that, all the uh, abandoned factory creatures probably did that. Uh, we can go and get these deposits then. Let's start with those, shall we? And then I can shuttle them back to the base and go from there. So with like uh, my EX-01 Earth Mover, I've got two modes on this thing. I've got a draw mode and I've got a cruise mode. Um, now, what I generally do when you're about to start mining is obviously put it in drill mode and then retract those turrets, um, assuming it's clear to do so, of course. And then it should work pretty well. We did test it on stream um, to reduce the hover height to about two meters, but yeah, it should dig reasonably well into uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're mining. It's got about 10,000 SU storage, uh, which is she was able to transport that old amount of pentaxid around the planet when we tested it. Uh, that was on a 1G planet. So it should work well. What I'm going to try and do is every time I sort of bring a build in like this is um, obviously publish it on the workshop as well so that you guys can have a look at it. So, assuming that I have actually uh, done that, there should be a link down below in the video description over to the Steam Workshop where you can get EX01 here, built for Reforged, of course. It probably won't work too well on vanilla, to warn you. It is built for Reforged, so there are changes in how CPU works and stuff like that. But uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to modify from vanilla, to be fair, if you want to give it a go. But yeah, assuming I've actually done it, link down below the video description to this thing. What I'm going to do is... As you can tell, it's going to be a very interesting episode, <laughs> mostly mining, um, but I'm not going to make you guys sit through it. Uh, I will go ahead and dig out this iron deposit. It's pretty much done. There's like 10% left. We'll leave that 10% there, otherwise it might not regen. Oh, no, I've screwed it. I screwed it up. It should regen. It should regen because it's in the ammo file. Well, we'll see, won't we? So, starter planets on this server. Uh, starter systems, not just the planets, the actual systems themselves, the deposits regenerate. So, uh, that got us 395 ore there. And we are only 1,000 into our 10k. So, let's head straight over to those copper deposits and dig them up next. Well... That should keep us going for a little while at least. Anyway, we've got a fair bit of iron there, a little bit of silicon, and we'd like to get some more silicon, but actually, you know, the planet is pretty ravaged at this point. There is one silicon deposit. I think it's just this one all the way down there. Um, everything else has sort of been kind of hacked and, and whatnot. We actually, I think there were more silicon deposits than that. There were definitely more. But anyway, a lot of the deposits are sort of gone. Um, but it's fine. They will regenerate every Monday. I'm told, anyway. Uh, base attack again, inevitably. Um, poor guy out there on his own. Poor guy. Hoping that, uh... Was that it? Was that, was that them dead? Oh no, here they come. Oh, please don't attack this guy. I think he's only just joined the server. <laughs> poor burger. Oh, I see him. Oh, you are not dropping bombs on me. Come on, die. No, no, turrets, come on. Oh, yeah, I think they are. I think they're attacking that poor guy over there. Right, okay, well, uh, jetpack. We will see what this thing is capable of then. Let's turn off drill mode. We'll just have the turrets on, please, Captain. Right, let's get you up the hill. There's one. Tiny little bastard. Yeah. Turrets, do your thing.
Well, I don't know where he's gone. He's just run off. Coward! <laughs> Come back here! <laughs> Finish what you started! Literally, he is literally just buggered off, isn't he? Can we even ping him? Oh, what happened to that guy? <laughs> he's just... What? <laughs> Where'd he go? I didn't realise they'd run off. He'd probably run off. Oh no, he's back. Oh, he's done a big... Done a big circle around, and now he's back over our friend. Look at this cinnamon bean. The bastard. What did he say? Seems like this man just playing it forward. <laughs> Turret! There you go, there's another bomb. Hey, got him. Carcass will rain down somewhere. Well, that long light bomb has gone in the drink. Let's see if we can go pick him up. They usually got something interesting or useful on them. Took a little getting down that one. They move very quickly. Difficult for the turrets to even track them. They were attacking the POI. Oh, okay, that's I'm glad. And they weren't attacking him. There we go. Okay, so base attack thwarted. What I want to do today is continue uh, a little bit of our story. We've got the mission to obviously approach and talk to um, the shopkeeper. Let's have a quick gooseberry back at um, what we managed to collect. And then we'll head off. So I don't actually really need to park. Like I said, yeah, we've got a little bit of iron now, a bit of copper. A very little bit of silicon we need to get some more of that um obviously like i said before i do want to take the unbanned factory again but there's nothing urgent about that we also have 213 silicon ingots sit there whereas the iron and the copper etc um are not ingotized yet i could uh set the portables here off on making ingots uh out of the iron and whatnot it's not a bad idea I need to swap these around. So Alamo input connect. Let's do that for the copper and the iron. Then we'll get we'll get you, sir, working on iron ingots for a days. These guys operate for free. Don't forget. So they're they're worth having having around inside your base because uh, it's just free processing, free constructor use. Now, if I was to use my current constructors, I'd have to turn them on. That would use a lot more fuel. Uh, and I've got 87 f hours of power just running at the moment. The fridge and the, the turrets outside, that's pretty much all it's powering. Maybe the Wi-Fi and the um, container extensions, I think, use a little bit of power as well. But that is it. So, yes, let's head south then to um, the Polaris trade station. We're going to continue the storyline from where we left it. Now, if you remember, we just got told to head over to the Polaris because I, our friends in the UCH met up with these Polaris people and they managed to arrange transportation off world so we're trying to find out where our friends went and uh, the last message I think was hey let's talk to the barkeep because generally barkeeps you know they know what's going on or are a good source of rumors and hearsay at least anyway okay so assume the barkeep is Bertram's uh, yep, looks like my shopkeeper. Hello! Hello there, valuable customer. What can I do for you today, sir? Ammunition, supplies, camping gear. You look like the outdoors type, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, I'm looking for my crew. I was hoping you'd seen them. Uh, where'd you get that motorbike from? Uh, Zeon MK20 guided rocket launcher with tractable sight and thermal tracking. <laughs> nice. I'm afraid not, sir. I only have her... He have a head for business and not of the comings and goings of anyone else but if you're looking for someone i recommend this um uch motorcycle there's nothing faster um where'd you get that uh i see you, you have a good eye sir this lovely piece of machinery was sold to me almost a year ago by a group of newcomers if you're interested in where they damn it now about the bicycle how about 3200 credits sound good to you not interested sorry I hate those things as the other option. <laughs> I've got a lead, IDA. According to the station logs, the security manager is called Officer Paravel. 
uh, touching a large amount of data traffic from his terminal, which is protected by high order AI that I cannot bypass. Be careful. Okie dokie. It'll be this guy here then. Hello, friend. I see you're done hassling the station staff and have finally come to me. I was getting tired watching your bumbling around, obstructing productivity and being a general nuisance. There's no need to open your mouth, Terran. Um, as you can see, they're obviously not here. They left a cycle ago on a transport, which I'm sure you already know. Anything more is confidential information accessible to the Polaris employees, of which you are not. Don't even consider begging, threatening me for information. I will have a station security on you before you can even unholster your weapon. I could just keep asking around until I find someone who knows. What do I need to do to get you to tell me what I need to know? Yeah, let's cut to the chase. You're starting to see reason. I can work with this. As I said, the information is confidential to Polaris employees. Fortunately, I, on behalf of Polaris Megacorp, have a proposition for you. Are you aware of the current political situation between us of Polaris Megacorp and the High Command of the Xerox Empire? No, of course you're not. Even so, it seems that the powers that be have determined that you could be a useful tool. Powers that be, so this isn't... This, is, <laughs> this isn't your decision? No, this is not my decision, nor is this my chosen way of doing things. Either way, I'll get my promotion out of this dump and into Habsec. Let me explain the situation in terms you can understand, alright? Polaris Megacorp is the greatest economic power in the galaxy and a formerly subsidiary of the Trade Guild up until the War of Silence two and a half centuries ago we, when we broke away as an independent entity. The Xerox are our major consumer of raw materials, but as we've been exhausting the deposits on our own quadrant of space, the depleted Xerox have failed to utilize the resources in territory and they've refused to give up rights to it. What, what does this have anything to do with me? Let me finish explaining before you interrupt with your inane questions. You are clearly not Polaris and have no ties to the corporation or to any local factions save your UCH Navy. Those lack of connections make you a useful tool for disrupting Xerox control over certain territories and planets without own replication for the company. You are free to move in, attack the Xerox, which I'm sure you don't mind doing considering what they did to your people, and leave the depopulated territory to the company to move in and set up. What would you call it? Humanitarian aid for the survivors of your vicious random attack? Uh, and what do I get out of this? What you get is the next step on your journey towards your missing people. And, of course, as an employee of Polaris Megacorp, you're entitled to pay some benefits, healthcare, dental, employee discounts, the usual. Since you have little choice in the matter, why don't you just agree already? I've just forwarded the agreement to your support AI to sign on your behalf. Hurry up and get it signed since your first assignment is time sensitive. Uh... I did, did you see the contract? Anything I should worry about? I did, Commander. Aside from an attempt to slip into malware into the contract, it's fairly loose. I've checked it against other station personnel contracts that I was able to access personal devices and yours is unusually free of loopholes or deception. I would guess that such a loose contract would prevent them from being legally bound to defend you in the event of your capture, with as few ties as possible to Polaris. In effect, it gives them plausible deniability. There's likely a deeper game being played here, but nothing that would conflict with your allegiance to the UCH. Alright, Ida, do I need to actually sign anything? No, Commander, I've registered and returned the copy to the contract. They also included their own malware packet in the signature. I thought you'd like that. <laughs> Good work, Ida. Wish I'd thought of that myself. Okay, manager, everything's been signed and sent back to you. Yes, I can see that. Everything appears to be in order. Welcome to the company, Lieutenant Commander Spange. I'm hoping you'll be a valuable asset to us. Your employee number is that. Memorize it is more important than your life now. I highly doubt that. I have a job for you already. It's time sensitive one, so I hope you have a ship ready. One of our survey towers has drifted over a Xerox owned ore vein, and we're concerned that they they may take hostile action. Company wants you to secure our asset as an unaffiliated third party. How about my people? You're supposed to tell me where they went. I'm not supposed to do anything. You are an employee of the Polaris, a contractor with no say in what do. I could have you cleaning toilets if I wanted. I've sent the job details to your secretary, AI, to handle. You are to go to protect Polaris assets from unwanted Xerox interference as a member of the UCH. We want plausible deniability within the hour. Now go. You'd better have answers when I come back. Okie dokie. Survey tower is that way. All right. Um, where's the dam? There it is. Okay. I got a hover vessel. So we should be able to get there reasonably quickly. Plus, this thing's armed. It's not very well armoured, although it has a mostly steel exoskeleton. Uh, there is carbon substrate, and a lot of it is also container extensions, which you don't necessarily want to get shot, especially if you're carrying cargo, otherwise it starts littering the ground with your cargo. 
Anyway, survey tower is about five kilometers away. I don't anticipate any problems on the way. Okay. Uh, yep, as anticipated, no issues. I'm gonna have to eat one of my precious ration packs though, because I've got to bring any food with me or buy any at the trade station. I'm not seeing any landing pad or any way to access the deck of the tower. I may have to pull up alongside and jump over. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get close to the surveyor. I don't. <laughs> I'm down here. Do I need an SV to do this? I don't have one of those yet. <laughs> I've just spent everything I've got on this this hover miner, mind you. I mean, you know. Yeah, I can't. I can't get close enough on this thing. I can get 38 meters. Obviously, I need to get right on top of it. Okay. Well, this isn't going to work, is it? <laughs> I'm definitely going to need an SV. Turrets are going up, going absolutely ham on on the wildlife around here, which is which is great to see. It's great to see that I don't have to do anything. They they're just going you know, to mow down everything in the in the place for me, which is lovely, absolutely lovely. In fact, if they've if they've killed a bunch of these guys, I might. Well, I mean, I'm not seeing any bodies around. That's the only thing. I mean, they're shooting stuff, but I have no idea where the bodies are lying. If you know what I mean. This is near Dinium. Your tank. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I was going to say let's get some meat, but who knows where the meat is? <laughs> the turrets are firing, but they're you know hundred hundred or so meter range. I did hear one over here? Oh, oh yeah, there's one. Get the meat. Get the meat. That's not meat. Oh, okay, whatever. Well, there we go. I think uh, I need to go away now, and we need to build an SV. Fortunately, I've already built one. That was also on a recent chill in the building. And that is when it loads the flash. Couldn't remember it for a minute there. But yes, the Flash is a nice little start at SV. It's mostly carbon substrate, as you can see from the resource costs, and actually quite low on all the other things. So we're going to chuck that in the factory. Um, and it looks like we're done on silicon already anyway. So copper, iron, and a bit of carbon substrate. Well, we're going to have to head back anyway. And uh, what I might do is, as I'm here, I might swing by uh, this silicon deposit. And uh, go and go and eat that. Actually, so unless anything else happens, I'll see you back at base. Just so happens to be a Promethean meteorite right next to this silicon deposit. Clearly, the uh, de deposit, uh, the resources on this planet have been depleted so much that uh, the server has decided to start throwing meteorites down to compensate. <laughs> it's probably likely that when I dig this silicon deposit up, another meteorite will probably come descending towards the planet uh, to refill some silicon on the planet. Otherwise we'll have to all wait until Monday in, in before it regenerates again. But this is nice, a Promethean meteorite. Look at this monster. Right, well I'm definitely digging this up as well as the um, silicon then. That is definitely happening. This is typically these things take forever, though. They they these things take longer than deposits a lot of the time because well, I suppose you don't have to move. You just sort of point the drills at it and and hold the mouse down. There's not really much to it. Uh, but there we go. What happens when a planet runs out of resources. Assuming it is configured for meteorites, this is this is what you get. Um, it's actually it's a lot slower than deposits. You can see on the left. Yeah, sort of eight, five, six, seven. Yeah, we'll we'll get through it though. Let's have a look to see how our portables are doing. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Two thousand ingots already. Okay, so I need to connect to back to the Alamo input directory. Directory, bloody hell! You know, working in IT for too long and calling things directory. That's not good. Right, they're still processing, so they've got a little ways to go. That's good, though. 2,000 iron, 2,000 silicon, and now 1,500... Uh, sorry, copper. Silic silicon in... <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. 1,500 uh, silicon ingots in there. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Okay, so what... Um, I, I've got to, obviously, put enough resources into the factory here. This should be no problem at all, getting this stuff together. Uh, let's just get this thing working on a little bit more... 
carbon substrate then to feed the factory with because I don't actually see any in there. Uh, which is a basic resource. We could just, uh, I don't know, line up 100, go. Basic crushed stone and fiber, and we still got 248 logs going around in here, so that should be no problem whatsoever. Let's get 200. Why not? Go on, get on with it. One turn, right. As for the base, um, well, like I said, grow plots are in order, aren't they? So, we need to make a uh, nutrient solution, which is this guy. That is this stuff. Stone dust. I need to put stone dust into the fridge. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> oh, is that all we have? Do we not have any more stone dust? Do I remember? Oh, well, there's a little bit in here. There's not much, though. Okay, I'm going to need to get some more stone dust as well. What little stone dust there is, is in there. How much does it use? Four stone dust each. We're going to need like nine of nutrient solution at least to get a nine plot farm up and running. So uh, let's line up a bit of stone dust in this guy as well. I'm not going to get a big constructor working on this because it's just little things. Little things. So a hundred crushed stone in there as well. And get that working. Okay. What I do want on the base is a little bit more firepower. I know that uh, the, the cannon turrets are doing a sterling job. They really are. They're doing a fantastic effort. But I'm going to want a couple of flak towers up by the solar panels here. That is not a flak tower, is it? Getting weird lag going on. Um, possibly... Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Anyway, flak. Two turrets of those, and uh, we need the flak for the base. Is that this stuff? 37 mil black BA ammo? What ammo does it take? Tell me. Oh, I suppose I've got to right click on it. Maybe I. I think it is that one. Flak BA. Okay. Let's line up. Uh, output count is 25. That's 250. That's 500. Go with 40 then. Okay. Go. Good sir. Build. We should have the magnesium powder for these this flak stuff. So 25 magnesium powder each though. Ouch. It's gonna sting. That's does yeah, that's gonna eat all of that, isn't it? 25 magnesium powder each. Yikes. Okay. Well, do as many as you can. Um this guy as well. I want producing concrete blocks. In order to build the tower or the flat cannons and that is just going to go literally just above the solar panels out here show you have a look because these turrets are great uh when these drones go over this hill here but obviously where i've got my solar panels up here there's nothing really shooting the drones so i'm gonna have a tower here and on the other side as well Hopefully defend my solar panels a little bit and also give us a bit of fire, uh, an even higher fire profile than what we have already. And uh, I hear flak is flak is in fashion these days, so that should be good. Uh, with the extra concrete, if we could build even more, I can maybe finish this bridge as well. That would be nice. That'd be very nice. So yeah. Uh, this constructor is going to be busy for a while. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'll get the big one to do the the concrete blocks then. There we go. All right. Uh, I guess I'll go and have a kip. Okay, I've got some concrete now. So let's go ahead and connect to the container here. We've got our concrete. We've got our flat cannons. I've already taken the liberty of putting the flak ammunition into the ammunition container, so we should be able to just run up to the solar towers, uh, the solar panels, build ourselves a little flak tower. I don't think it's going to be very high. I don't think it needs to be very high. I want to make it slightly higher than the solar panels itself, and I want one on either side. They are going to be part of the base, but later on I'm going to build um, dedicated kind of defense towers that are also solar powered. Connect to Alamo, that's what we want. Pit that drone up here. These solar panels are a bit precariously kind of floating here, aren't they? Uh, right. So, yeah, I want it sort of about there, and I want it to come up above, just about above the uh, solar panels there. And just, I'm not going to make anything particularly fancy here. It, and in fact, I don't even know if I've got enough. Um, 
<laughs> I can't have concrete for this. Uh, let's, let's find out. I mean, ooh, there goes something. Yeah, I've only got five blocks left. Whoops, I'm going to need to build some more concrete there. Let's, uh, let's maybe set you not to shoot predators, Mr. Flat Cannon, shall we? Yeah, there you go. Okay, yes, I'm going to need some more concrete blocks here. I thought I built enough, but that's clearly not the case. Large constructor's busy. You, small constructor, the uh, output there, please, sir. Be another... 100 concrete blocks, 881 crushed stone. Should be able to produce enough blocks for that. Um, the other tower I want on the other side over here. This one's going to be a little less tall and lanky, of course, because uh, it's already sort of elevated by the ground. Oh, here's that. Job Imperion, thank you very much for that. That is the same level as that? Or is that the same level as that? It's a bit difficult to tell. I think that is. I think that's it. And uh, there we go. It's our second black tower. Uh, and you can not shoot predators as well, please. Sir. No. Seriously? <laughs> Stop wasting precious flak ammo on, on wildlife. It is unnecessary. Um, your guy's job is to absolutely annihilate any drones that come anywhere near the base is that understood right bit of more bit of more bit of more bit a bit bit more uh concrete there so go it's random lag spike there as well always a joy there we go well i mean okay so all i'm going to do with these is literally just this a bit of a corner block on them like that I need to dig down in order to get full effect there because obviously the game doesn't allow me to put blocks sometimes where the ground like that it won't let me put a block there too much ground um, and just waiting for the blocks on the other side but otherwise that's then done and we got a little bit more defense on our base here like I said I probably need to sort these solar panels out they're fine at the moment um, I have tilted them to the south as I sort of spoke about earlier um, but I also need to build the bridge, and that's interesting. Half my bridge is missing. Oh, and so are my two turrets over there. This happens sometimes. This this happens sometimes. Um, let me just re-log out of the server, and they will be back. Oh, as if like magic. There we go. They are back. Right. Wonderful. So we should have enough concrete blocks now to finish the other tower off. Very simply, do the same thing. I'll just do that all the way around. Oh, uh, we're under attack. Let's let's go out and see how our new defense system handles this attack. What we got? Let's have a look. They'll be here any second, I'm sure. Rocket siege drones. Uh, so these are the fast ones, I think, that fly over the top. Flak turrets are firing, but... Oh, wow, they are too quick for the flax. They're dodging them completely. Uh, the minigun siege drone, I suspect, are probably going to get shot down by this guy's base here. Yeah, these guys are useless against that, aren't they? Wow, not even the cannon turrets got a hit on that. I don't think he's actually deployed any uh, bombs yet. Here it comes, here it comes. It looks like it's targeting me, but... Uh, Perhaps that got shot down. <laughs> Splat. Splat it goes. The other siege drone, I suspect, coming from um, right over the, that other guy's base there, is no doubt going to get killed on the way. Quite good. I mean, the guy is kind of set up around me here. Some extra defences for the base. I'm surprised the flak turrets aren't quick enough to hit that... I mean, they are very quick, in fairness. Um, I do wonder if missiles would probably also struggle. Considering their speed, the missiles might actually just run out of uh, track before they actually hit anything. But uh, there we go. Well, we've got some flag. That'll at least help against the, the slower drones, for sure. But uh, those speedy ones, perhaps not. But uh, having a few bases around this area now is making these base defense, these base attacks completely and utterly... Uh, Unaffected, really.
Food is a pretty serious issue right now. Um, I'm working my way through these uh, cans of sort of meat that I had, but oh man, after that, that's pretty much it. But I have a bunch of sprouts and stuff I could be using. So uh, I have built some grow plots. They were actually kind of a pain in the butt to build because they're a nutri nutrient solution. I don't know if that's the same, how expensive it was before. But it seemed more anyway. But fortunately, although I run out of water, I have my water generators, of course. So that was fine. The stone dust I have crafted and that was fine so i got nine nutrient solution and that was fine um and then obviously the cost of concrete has gone up so yeah that cost a bit on the stone dust side of things back down to seven seventy four stone dust and in, in, in fact in order to produce enough crushed stone for uh what i want to be building here in order to build the concrete uh i've put the tunnel wrap back to use as well and dug some more just for fun <laughs> put a nice little force field up there because i need to make this place airtight so i've got some oxygen tanks in i've put a door here like i said i would there's a door at the front obviously and i put a couple of the force fields that i looted from the factory up here so we got a nice little kind of um i don't know exit for the tunnel rat into my my quarry <laughs> for all intents and purposes I don't know what else to call it. Uh, so I even managed to build the grow plots, concrete grow, grow plots, uh, which can only be used on a base. I don't plan on sort of moving these from um, here, so that's fine. Otherwise, I would have built steel grow plots, which you can then swap onto a capital ship. Right, there we go. One grow light should be enough to keep things going, um, although I will need to put some... Now, it is a breathable planet. I shouldn't need to put oxygen in here for these plants to grow. They should be fine. Um, and with everything sealed off, again, it should be fine. There, you know, a, a lot of you are probably in the comments going, "Span, you don't need, you don't need to uh, make it airtight. It's a breathable planet." I do it anyway because experience has taught me um, that despite your base, you know, being breathable or on a breathable planet. Uh, weather happens and if you don't have a sealed base weather can i found previously and i don't know if this is still the case they may have changed it in all fairness but weather can can penetrate into the base like a radiation storm or something like that and bye bye goes your crops whereas if you seal the base and you you uh pressurize it and put oxygen in it then the likelihood of that happening is markedly reduced in fact it's impossible uh so call me uh paranoid but i am going to pressurize the base i <laughs> do not want to lose this crops um so we should only need i can't remember the exact ratio we don't have all the plants we need anyway i think i need a uh, fruit sprout i have one fruit i can't make a sprout out of that uh, we have berries, which don't count as fruit for some unknown reason. Um, they can only be used to make a berry juice, which is fine for sort of general healing purposes, but is otherwise bloody useless. Um, and that's pretty much it. Alien honey, which is which is great, I suppose, for some things. You can make ribs <laughs> out of those with some, some vegetables that you can turn into to meat. Anyway, I'm going to stick with um, the blue peppers which come out as vegetables the spice a couple of those for plant protein actually let's just finish that off with plant protein i don't know what i'm going to be able to create with this um but yeah i mean i could go outside and probably harvest some more of the grains and get some grain sprouts and then i'd be able to make bread and stuff which is quite a good uh filling meal let's have a quick check um because you can use the bread make the burgers yeah you need mushrooms for that uh so the vegetable ones at least plant protein vegetables and bread so if i had some i could make a bunch of veggie burgers and they'd be quite good with a food of 143 regular bread is a food of 58 so yeah that would be probably the one i'd go for that's that's possible even meat spice and purified water well, we've got spice we've got the veg vegetables which we can turn into um meat and I think the vegetable, canned vegetable is probably easier. But yeah, we're, we're quite away from glazed ham. <laughs> we're quite away from getting this one. Um, yeah. That'll come. That'll come later. For now, just having something. Scrambled eggs. I love in these new recipes that they've added. It's awesome. The ribs, scrambled eggs. 
all the different wines. What's this? Promethean Slammers. <laughs> Appleseed Corporation Brews. Hang about. How did Appleseed get in here? What the hell? This is outrageous. I can't believe that Appleseed have got their own brew. This is unbelievable. Raven, what have you done? <laughs> Appleseed are not a legitimate corporation. They are a bunch of pirates and conniving bastards. Scheming swines. Now they've made it into the, the goddamn game. Uh, Liquid Assassin. I want my own brew. Damn it. <laughs> Where are my Spanish slammers? <laughs> that sounds wrong. Anyway, it's ASC, man. The bastards. The good news is, though, we have some plants, and they're going to grow, and hopefully that's going to stave off starvation for a little while. Uh, let's... You can turn off now. Thank you very much. I do need to put a little switch or something here that will make my little life... I mean, it's not too bad going F and then turn that off, but, you know, a little switch might make it a little easier. Um, you can turn off as well, Mr. Food Processor. You don't need to be burning fuel. Uh, so I've done a little bit on the bridge. Yes, it is nighttime. Welcome to a Spanish video. Um, <laughs> I built the bridge. The bridge is up. Uh, I had to dig out the ground a bit because I miscalculated the height. I think it will work in my favour. It is... Uh, quite low down, but that does mean then I don't have so far to go for the the water gens. But then if I want a tunnel, which I do, I do want a tunnel up to the top there to the to the generate the solar panels. Um, so I've got some quick access to the to the top of the hill. The bridge is done. I had to eat into the ground a little bit. That was fine. Uh, this is all like surface dirt, so it didn't give me any crushed stone doing this. What I'm going to do here as well when I get the concrete, which is expensive now, thanks for a million. Um, I'll dig a little bit into the ground here, and then I'm going to do a ramp up to this turret. This turret will move. The ramp will come up to about here, and then we'll start building the CV pad up on this slightly, slightly flatter ground up here. The turret will then move to over here. Um, I might get another one over here as well. I've run out of CPU now. Uh, so I need another base extender if I'm going to increase CPU. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, right, they're not on predators, but they will attack aliens, and the assassins count as aliens, so do the, the hexapods, um, now known as controllers, I think, for the Creole faction. Um, yes, yeah, so they just get obliterated. Uh, also, my friends that have built sort of around me over there have obviously got turrets. Uh, there's some rocket turrets up on the hill now. Um, Bag End, great name for a base. Love that. Baggins! <laughs> the MOB faction are set up nearby. They've, they've got CVs and Chrysler. I don't think they're going to be here for much longer, but they have set up missile turrets on the hill there, which are greatly helping uh, to thwart the base attacks. Not that they were much of an issue now that we've got flak and cannon and everything. I have removed the two cannon turrets from the top of the base there because CPU. I figure that these two cannon and those two flax should be more than enough to deal with the base attacks going forward. But yes, um, the base is progressing. The base is progressing. So we should be... I mean, it's it's a bit of a grind because of the, the cost of concrete now. Normally, I'd dig out, say, 2,000 crushed stone and I'd be able to build... You know, a, a city out of that stone. <laughs> Not anymore, no. Uh, which is why I've got the tunnel rat working on just digging out huge swaths of the mountain anyway our our sv is done let's bring this in this is the flash and as i said earlier i'll try and uh put this on the workshop by the time this uploads and so there will be a link down below in the video description where you can subscribe to the flash flash again built in chilling the building for reforged it is just a starter sv twin gat kind of setup nice wing spread so it can actually carry a fair bit fridge storage um i think it's got some internal storage i can't remember now i haven't even grouped the damn stuff that's that's good isn't it it's always a good sign oh it's got the cargo drum and i think the ammo box is quite sizable though that was it i just made the ammo box quite big yeah two two nine six nine on the ammo um speaking of which we'll need to craft some more 15 mil yes we will in order to arm this thing i also have nowhere to park it other than on the bridge here so until i get some sv pads i mean sv pads are exposed anyway so <laughs> it's not gonna make much difference um, I'll park it on the bridge for now, and then I might have to do some um, some musical chairs with the, the ships and stuff in order to get them in, out, shake it all about, and all that stuff. Anyway, 
We don't have to worry about that. All this random ammo in here. Um, I am going to take those laser pistol charges, though. I didn't realize they were in there. Um, come to me! Thank you very much. Uh, so, I don't have a sniper rifle anymore. Don't need those. I don't know what happened to my sniper rifle. I think I put it in the factory. <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right, so, you're the laser pistol rounds, you're the shotgun rounds, and you're the... Uh, so the shotgun rounds can come with me. They, I kind of need those for the sentry guns, so I'm going to stick with the 687 that I have, and hope that's enough. We are going to, once this ammo is crafted, head back to that Polaris thingamajiggy over there, wherever it is, this one, uh, see if we can board it with our SV and complete that Polaris mission. Uh, I was only doing the sort of Polaris missions to get the, the wrap up so that I can mine in their territory, but we've already done that, so that's not so bad. But obviously we're continuing the PDA missions. Uh, plausible deniability. We've got the cruel stars, off-world grave still to do, uh, and then we've got make contact with Terran forces, the dead part one lost worlds. There are also uh, Polaris fuel delivery missions. There's uh, hunting party. I should check in on the Talon, see how they're doing. They could probably do with a hand with hunting after losing so many of their hunters. Um, yeah, I mean that might be nice. Ten gold coins, twenty reputation. Cannot complete this mission on a planet without a Talon village or settlement. Makes sense. Repairing the damage. They've lost a lot of their buildings and villages recently, either the, to Xerax Thuggery or Forest Fires. I should see if they need any help repairing the damage caused. It's not as though UCH are innocent in this after our ship's crashing. I mean, you can't... <laughs> yes, the ship's crashing caused big fires, but it's not exactly the UCH fault that the ship's crashed, is it? The Xerax shot them to buggery. Anyway, uh, five gold. Is that it? Come on. <laughs> a little bit more of a reward. Uh, Xerax missions cannot be can only be unlocked by becoming a Xerax spy via the main story mission quest line by betraying the other factions. Not yet available. That's interesting. I like betraying the other factions. Uh, okay, so I've got to become friendly with the Xerax, I guess, at the expense of Polaris and Talon. Hmm, could be an interesting one to do later in the game. Um, but yes, we're going to continue this. You should be almost done with the ammo, and then we'll be good to go. All right, all ammoed up, fueled up, ready to go. Let's lock the doors. Here we go. The Flash. We're airborne, ladies and gentlemen. This is awesome. First time up in the sky. We don't have to contend with twigs anymore. Um, <laughs> that, that brings a smile to my face. It really does. Uh, the Flash, yeah, it works quite well. It's quite fuel efficient because of the wingspan. On Reforged... Uh, contrary to the vanilla game, wings and sort of a wide profile like this with more surface area actually contributes to the ship's sort of maneuverability in some ways. Um, and it also provides more lift than in the vanilla game, I believe. Although Vermilion correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. But yeah, the Flash is obviously designed to try and take advantage of uh, the lift mechanics in Reforged and provide a little bit extra lift than what it says it can take in the statistics. So obviously in the statistics page here it will say, okay, cargo lift available 20.8 tonnes. So I think I had about 80 tonnes in there during the test or something like that I did on the stream and it flew uh, because of the wingspan there. So that, that really does help having that sort of wider profile, which is kind of... I wouldn't do that in vanilla because I think the last time I built something like this in vanilla, it just it wouldn't roll. And well, although the roll is kind of sluggish here, it rolls, so it's fine. Anyway, this isn't a combat ship; it is armed with twin gats, so it can actually deal with some drones, at least from above. Anyway, uh, but yes, it wouldn't be. I wouldn't use it to attack. Say, is that a meteorite? Silicon meteorite. Sweet, sweet by the. Uh, yeah, by the crashed ship. Okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't use it to attack a Xerax installation, for example. Uh, that would be suicide. Anyway, here we are. Here is the survey tower. We need to get on to it. So I need to hover kind of thing. Oh, this is awkward. Quite awkward. Um, all right. I don't, I don't see a way of boarding it unless we can go on the lower level, maybe? I don't know, actually. Let's just hover here and, and uh, walk along the wing. So, is this going to work? You sometimes when I get out of the cockpit, the ship starts sinking down a bit like that. Okay, it's just sunk down a little bit. I can deal with that. Let's hope that I can jump onto this thing and not... Hi. Hey! 
You need to move the surveyor now. Xerox are preparing to attack the tower. That's why you're you're here. I'm reconfiguring the grav field, but Commander, two Xerox bombers have launched the Xerox territory and headed for your location. Prepare to intercept. Alright, well, I guess we're gonna intercept them. Oh crikey, here they come. Let's reload those guns. Oh Okay, this um this is not built for this. <laughs> we do our best here. But the uh yeah, these bombers move quickly. This is um this is a tricky little fight. Usually they're sort of fairly sort of immobile the bombers and stuff, aren't they? Uh not the bombers, the drones, I mean. Yeah. So I've got one in my sights, they sort of turn around, change direction very quickly. I'm out of range. What the hell? I'm, I'm hitting them every now and again. This is going to take a while. Come on, down you go. Oh. Avoid that bomb. Right, one down. Where's the other one? He's above me. There he is. Wow. This must be like old man trying to figure out computer. Like old guy tries to shoot down two bomber drones. Ah, oh, where are they? I can't see them. I don't know what's going on. Where am I? Who are you? Oh, are we getting good then? Why are you in my house? <laughs> Should all imagine right now that the Top Gun theme is playing. That's that's what I'm imagining. <laughs> No, don't turn around just like instantly, just turn on the spot. It's like I've got to take three hours to turn around. My, my ship's like turning around a cruise ship. It, <laughs> it's got to be planned and you know executed slowly. These guys just turn on the spot. Ah, I'm on his six. Wow, oh, I got him. All targets destroyed. They do not appear to be ready. Another wave of bombers. Well, good. Because they were a pain in the ass. Thank you, sir. Would have been toast if head office didn't send you. Uh, are you going to get out of here now, buddy? They might not be sending reinforcements right now, but probably will. Nah, mate. I radioed the Xerox base and said you attacked the tower and blew up their bombers. They give me perms to stick around and keep an eye on future... <laughs> sure. Fine. Here, yeah, so you can go back. Uh, leave this here to me. Thank. Thanks again, sir. <laughs> I can't read this quick enough. It's all like written in accents and stuff okay return to officer Privilege, the security manager six kilometers away in yonder direction this is a stick up all right i've done what you wanted the survey tower is safe the tower gets to stay where it is and the xerox think it is an isolated uch attack now tell me where my people are uh not so fast number you're an employee of the polaris now and we pay our employees when they complete a job satisfactorily in fact you did better than we expected we didn't expect the xerax to allow our asset to remain in place all right hand over the cash uh there's nothing to hand over <laughs> all contract jobs are paid directly into your account with polaris verify the payment at the machine behind you uh when we're done payment received 1500 what's the obsession with money around here uh, to Polaris and trade guilds, there's nothing more important, more sacred than money. It's a measure of one's value and one's achievements in life. A physical means of measuring the worth of a man can be seen in his wealth. I suppose you could think of money to us as counters in the great game of life, and we're all players, whether we like it or not. How very capitalist of you. A man with no wealth is either a failure or a threat to those that, that do. A man who does not seek to gain wealth is a danger to everyone that does. So keep in mind, Spange. That if you do not seek compensation at Polaris, you'll be considered untrustworthy. That shouldn't be anything new to you, though. Okay, fine. Now then. Your people's contracts are still classified, but I've been given permission to tell you the specifics of what they negotiated for and point you in the general direction you need to go. I'm not permitted to, nor do I want to, reveal anything more. Your naval personnel arrived here 10 months ago and agreed to contracts with Polaris that they would loan us two teams of UCH engineering corps to provide Terran equipment and manufacturing process to Polaris Megacorp in exchange for funding, transportation, and opening dialogue to a partnership with various Polaris Megacorp subsidiaries. <laughs> Upon completing arrangements, the clients were taken to Kenex 62 in orbit aboard a pair of large transport for medical attention to be assigned to long-distance couriers to their chosen destinations. The naval engineers arrived on the station a week later and were transported off-site by a Polaris security fleet. Uh, security fleet? What's Kenex 62? Um, Kenex station is a major transport trading hub Polaris in orbit above the dump 
this dump of a planet, you'll need a ship or teleport clearance to reach it. One of the pilots that took your people up there can tell you how to get there. Pilot? Yes, a pilot. An idiot that flies a ship, just like you. <laughs> He's sitting over there on that bench and will be more than happy to answer your inane questions. Farewell, and I hope to never see you again. Yeah, thanks for all your help. <laughs> Vermilion, did you write this? <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot of you in it. Let's just say that. Pilot, you! Uh, can I help you? I'm looking for a fare you picked up from this station a few months ago. My memory's a little fuzzy. That could be anyone. Uh, care to enlighten me? Uh, it was an executive order from Apara. Laris, la la. Two transports, including you, picked up foreign Navy personnel from the station and took them to a place called Kennex 62 in orbit. Should be pretty memorable. Alright, attitude. Store it. You know what? That does ring a bell. Unfortunately, the bell's a little rusty and gives a little oil, if you get my meaning. <sighs> I get your meaning. You want money. How much to get that bell oiled? You expect me to pay you? What's to stop me from going to the station security? How much to get the bell? Well, seeing that you just got paid by the boss man over there, let's go with 80 credits. Not too bad if I say so myself. You're new around here, so you're probably not familiar with how things work. You don't overcharge people for cheap information. A little grift is all it takes to move up around here. If you get too greedy, there's always someone above you that'll want his cut. So keep your side business small. Gee, thanks for the pointers. Hey, it may sound underhanded, but this kind of stuff will save your lives in the corporate game Polaris are running. The straight man who thinks he'll get anywhere with hard work and determination ain't working and or will never move up. As long as you don't get caught or if you can pay off something. So what'll it be? You're going to cough up 80 credits for the info or take your business elsewhere? Threaten. <laughs> Maybe not. Pay 80 credits. It's only 80 credits. Pleasure doing business with you, pal. Okay, so if I'm remembering right, there was me and <laughs> Bradoon taking some guys like you up to Kennex Station in orbit back then. Uh, there's two light transports, so that's about 40, 50 people or so. I heard some of them were injured. About five of them weren't in good shape. Uh, two on my ship and three on and Bardoon's got stuck with a girl with a crushed leg and a busted head on my ship. Hammerson or something. Emerson. Natasha Emerson. So she did survive the Heidelberg. So exactly what did you take? Where exactly did you take them? Like I said, Kennex Station. Look, I'll just send you the location data. You can sort it out yourself. Thanks for the help. Glad to help, I guess. Leave. Um, I am a bit stupid. I, I, I don't know why I keep sort of trying to trip over. Where did they go? Kennex Station. Where did they go? Kennex. God. Kennex. God. Where did they go? Shut up, man. Kennex Station. I got it. Anyway, right. Uh, Kennex Station, a hub for freighters and transport craft. Cool home. Blah, 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 blah. Begin. Cool. So our next mission is to go to space. Commander, I have the location of Kinect Station queued up on your display. You'll have plotted a course of the station's landing bay. You can there in 15 minutes. Uh, whoa there, idea. What's this sudden rush? I'm not quite ready to hell. Besides, what a couple of hours after almost a year. There is no immediate rush, Commander. However, I have decrypted a deep space transmission from Xerix Station calling for a destroyer to reinforce the local planetary orbit. It would be best something. That's no guarantee that they're there to secure the station. They'd have no reason they could be there to deal with the pirates or something. Yes, Commander, that is possible. I have detected increased combat activity in the sector that does not match Xerox patrols that could be attributed to pirates. See? Nothing to worry about. We can always avoid the ship when it turns up. It's not like a destroyer is fast. Faster than any well-made Terran ship. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right, Commander. Bringing up course data. I could, <laughs> I could go to orbit, but I mean, the, the the dialogue there has given us the cue, the clue. If we go to orbit, we are going to get killed by a destroyer. So I don't want to go to orbit without, at very least, a shield on this SV or an SV with a shield, um, or a shielded CV, which I don't think I'm going to be able to get. In all fairness, a shielded CV is probably dependent on a shielded SV, first of all. So, <laughs> the flash here is not exactly uh, capable of upgrading. It's great little planetary scout. Uh, you know, it could deal with some bombers eventually after an old man gets to grips with the controls. But there isn't any room in there for a shield. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to do the abandoned factory again um, and get some more loot out of that. Hopefully that's going to give us a little bit more of the rare materials we need in order to build some of the more 
expensive kind of things like the bridges and matrices and stuff. Let's see actually if now if I connect to my input box, this may tip me over the edge of the old four, four steel plate and four, 12 mechanical components. And upgrade, bingo. Fine, we're still in CPU, we're still in CPU, it's all good. But that should hopefully open up the door now for, yes, we can now bridges, build the bridges and the matrices. Uh, but what we need is shield generator, a jump drive, which is going to help us get around, hopefully is going to help us get around this solar system um, and get some of the more rare materials like uh, neodymium, which we're going to need for the CV. So the CV that we're going to be bringing in is the Pioneer which is our little starter. This thing is upgrade ready. So we could chuck a shield in it straight away. We could chuck more storage into it, ex put more extenders in it. It's got hard points for extra turrets. So I'm hoping that this thing is actually going to take us quite quite a way uh, through the, the initial sort of space game. Um, I'm not going to go into orbit with it without a shield, put it that way. So I've got lots of work to do off camera, like extend the base, try and build up the, the CV pad outside the base here on this hill uh retake the abandoned factory again loot the crap out of that in the next episode i really want to concentrate on trying to get a warp capable shielded sv so that we can go up to the station uh and then start working uh, really working on that um on that sort of cv side of thing so that we can actually move off of this planet and get on with it now obviously i'm not going to move off this planet permanently uh this base will be sort of here um and will be a nice little sort of I don't know. I don't want to call it a headquarters because it won't be the headquarters. It'll be a nice little outpost to have on Roggery for new faction members to perhaps use as as they join the server or whatever. Uh, but yes, next episode, I haven't built it yet, but I'm going to be trying a warp capable shielded SV. We're going to try and get that in through the loot in the abandoned factory and anything else we can actually loot around here that regens. There is a um, unknown helix over here, which has got a free loot container on it. That's what we're going to do. But otherwise, that is all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.